Tonight, a first warning weather special report. Meteorological winter begins just two weeks from now, and the new official weather outlook for the season will be issued by NOAA in just two days. Here's what it will say. Our weather this winter will be influenced by a pattern known as La Nina, where the Pacific Ocean temperatures in this region are cooler than normal. In fact, they already are. This will cause the cold and stormy jet stream patterns to shift to the north. When that happens, you get this. Our outlooks for this winter, warmer than normal temperatures and below normal rainfall, a drier season ahead. But it's not as boring as it sounds. Our meteorologists Rosie Newberry, Natalie Ferrari, and David Yeomans join us from across Central Texas tonight after gathering the latest trends and historical data on this topic to get the most complete picture for what to expect. First up, Rosie down on the hike and bike trail, taking us back to last winter, the warmest on record. Hey, Jim, talking to people out here on the trail, it's hard for folks to even remember breaking out the coats last year. The day after Christmas, it was like 72 or 3 sure, degrees. Yes, it was a very mild winter to say the least. Once our summer heat broke, Jay Otto has been spending three days a week on the trail this fall. It's wonderful. There's not a better place in Central Texas than right here. He considers himself lucky. Outdoor allergies don't really affect him. They're not prominent. They're not uh, on me all the time, but unexpectedly they come up. <coughs> and he might change his tune this year. Milder winter conditions come at a price. Trees want warm and wet conditions to make pollen. And so if you combine the two, the pollen counts not only go higher, but when you throw the wet in, then the pollen itself actually gets stronger. Here's the rub. Wetter doesn't necessarily mean rain. If we're dry but humid, like last year, that'll encourage more powerful pollens. Cedar reached its second highest levels ever last winter. It's having such a bad cedar season, then there might be more people becoming allergic to cedar because they'll have had higher exposure to it. Jay may sniffle more this winter, but it won't keep him off the trail. And he welcomes more foot traffic, thanks to the nicer days. Or more the merrier. It's Austin. Keep it weird. This may surprise you. During bad years, cedar flies far away from our area. Last year, allergists say our cedar was so bad it was detected as far away as Tulsa, Oklahoma. Something to prepare for. Back to you. Thank you, Rosie. And here's an important point. Just because we're forecasting a warmer than normal winter doesn't mean warm weather the whole time. It will likely include a lot of mild weather, but a few serious cold snaps too, like we've seen in past La Nina years. Meteorologist Natalie Ferrari joins us from one of the typical trouble spots in Northwest Austin. That's right, Jim. It was just last winter, also a La Nina winter, when we saw a frigid cold snap and even some icy bridges and overpasses, just like this one. We're here to do the job to keep those roads open. Whether it's heat, snow, <laughs> or severe weather, Central Texas has seen it all in the winter. That's why Chris Bishop with TxDOT will be monitoring road conditions closely, despite how mild this winter may be. We treat every winter the same way, as if it could be the worst icing conditions possible. And it could be. Last January, we saw some of the coldest mornings in nearly six years. Some will recall the winter of 84 85, when over eight inches of snow fell in Austin, making it the city's snowiest winter on record. Those things happened during a winter pattern like the one we are predicting this year. We've been very fortunate. We haven't had that for a while. So we've already laid in and ordered stocks of de icer. Uh, we have some sand available, and everybody is ready for when the weather does happen to turn sour to where we can be called out and hit the road running. And it's not just snow or ice. Last February also brought severe weather, including four tornado touchdowns in our metro counties. It's not all science and it's not all art. It's a little bit of both. TxDOT tells me the reason they pay close attention to bridges and overpasses is because of how the concrete chills from underneath, causing ice to form much faster than it does at ground level. Back to you. Thank you, Natalie. Those winter extremes can also include extreme drought. Just seven years ago, the first of back-to-back -back La Nina years contributed to the worst drought in our area's history. In September 2010, Tropical Storm Hermine dumped 16 inches of rain on the Austin metro area, taking two lives. But immediately after, we kicked off our driest 12 months ever, and that included the hottest summer ever in 2011. And with the La Nina already here, this fall has been unusually dry. 
but is it a sign we're heading into a drought? David Yeomans fills us in from Lake Travis. Today, Lake Travis has more water than we'd expect this time of year, but the sometimes islands near Mansfield Dam are showing again. A sobering reminder that we're just one dry period away from changing the recreational landscape and endangering the drinking water supply for more than a million Central Texans. I think it's the nicest lake on, in, in Texas, personally. Roland Adams has worked on Lake Travis for 31 years. A ride through his marina shows slips packed with boats fresh off the water. Have fun. But not long ago, things were different. It just felt like, you know, because of the length of the drought, um, you know, the first, the first year was like being knocked down in a fight, and every year after that was like being kicked in the ribs. Lake Travis was just shy of full in late 2010, but then it fell almost 50 feet in just over a year. The lake got even lower in 2013, and it didn't rebound until the Memorial Day floods two years later. Lake levels have been healthy since 2015. People underestimate how long it's going to take to totally recover. We still haven't recovered from the drought. As we head into the winter months with a nearly full lake, Travis Roland has a reminder granted, for whenever the next drought it, uh, comes. Even at its lowest level was still a gym, a real gym. Probably more so than it is now, just because there was nobody out here using it. Now, it is important to note that after the lake fell so sharply back in 2011, the LCRA changed their policy about how much water they'll release to downstream rice farmers in the future. So even if we did enter another really dry period, it is unlikely the lake would fall by as much. On Lake Travis, David Yeomans, back to you. Thank you, David. Now, let me stress the La Nina pattern this winter doesn't definitely mean drought. There have been plenty of exceptions. But after a couple of wet years now, our next drought is definitely drawing closer. And as Jim mentioned, later this week, we'll get the official NOAA weather outlook. Yes, so join us Thursday on KXAN News at 10 when we get even more precision on what's to come as we pair what we learn from national experts with our own first warning weather winter predictor for Central Texas.